Julius Caesar's military career was marked by several notable campaigns, among which the Helvetii campaign took a significant place. In 58 BC, the Helvetii tribe, located in the Eastern Alps region, planned to migrate to Western Gaul, which would cross Roman territory. Caesar, who was serving as the governor of Cisalpine Gaul at that time, saw the Helvetii migration as a threat to Roman power and quickly assembled his army to stop them. The Helvetii campaign was a fierce conflict that lasted for several months, marked by several battles and military maneuvers. We will explore in depth the events that led to the Helvetii campaign, its significant moments and impact on Caesar's military career. On the 28th of March in 58 BC, my people began a migration, taking all our people and livestock. We burned our villages and stores to ensure that we would not be able to return. When we reached Transalpine Gaul, where Caesar was the governor, we asked for permission to cross Roman lands. Caesar considered our request but ultimately denied it. So instead, we turned north, entirely avoiding any Roman lands. I did not hesitate when I received the request from the Gauls. I recalled the brutal fate of Consul Lucius Cassius. The Helvetii had slain him and routed his army, sending them under the yoke. With this memory fresh in my mind, I saw no reason to make any concessions to this tribe. I knew that they were not friendly to Rome, and believed that if we allowed them to march through our province, they would only cause chaos and destruction. It was clear to me that they must be stopped at all costs. When news of their migration arrived, I was in Rome, and I immediately rushed to Transalpine Gaul, raising two legions and some auxiliaries along the way. I delivered my refusal to the Gauls, and then promptly returned to Italy to gather the legions I had raised on my previous trip and three veteran legions. With 30,000 legionary troops and some quantity of auxiliaries, many of whom were themselves Gauls, I was ready to face any challenge ahead. It was brought to my attention that the Helvetii tribe was planning to migrate through the land of the Sequani and the Edui into the borders of the Santones, not far from the Tolisates, a state in the province. I immediately recognized the danger this would bring upon the province, particularly as it would put a warlike tribe, hostile to the Roman people, as neighbors to an unprotected district that was rich in corn. It was clear to me that we must take swift action to prevent this migration and protect our land and people. At this time, the Helvetii had successfully navigated their forces through the defiles and had reached the borders of the Edui, where they began to pillage and destroy the land. The helpless Edui, unable to protect their people or property, sent representatives to Caesar, pleading for his assistance. The river Arar, which flowed through the territories of the Sequani and Edui and eventually reached the Rhone, became the next target for the Helvetii to cross. They constructed rafts and boats fastened together to cross the river. When Caesar received word from his scouts that the majority of the Helvetian forces had successfully crossed, leaving only a quarter of their forces behind, he led three legions in a surprise attack on the remaining division. Caught off guard and heavily loaded, many were killed in the battle, while the survivors fled and hid in nearby forests. After defeating the Helvetian forces on the near side of the river Seine, Julius Caesar ordered for a bridge to be constructed over the river and led his army across it to pursue the remaining Helvetian forces. Upon realizing Caesar's swift approach and his ability to construct a bridge in a single day, the Helvetii became alarmed and sent ambassadors to him, seeking peace talks. However, it was not possible to reach an agreement. The Helvetians found Caesar's demand for hostages unacceptable. The Helvetians tried to leave, but Caesar pursued them. The long maneuvers were accompanied by small skirmishes between the cavalries of both sides. The Helvetian cavalry prevailed, but the Roman losses were small. As a result, Caesar's army began to run out of food, and the Allies were in no hurry to fulfill their food supply promises. He deployed his army to the nearest Allied city Bibract, which the Helvetians tried to take advantage of. The Helvetians followed Caesar's army and attacked the rearguard.
When Caesar learned of this, he sent his cavalry to hold off the Gauls and buy time to get the best position for his army. He lined up four legions in three lines and placed them at the foot of the hill. With the other two legions and all the support troops, he positioned himself at the top of the hill. At around noon or one o'clock, the Helvidi engaged in battle after driving off Caesar's cavalry. Caesar's legions, organized in a hilltop battle line, easily repelled the Helvidi's charge by using throwing spears. Succeeding this, the Roman legionaries drew their swords and made their way downhill to engage their opponents. Though many of the Helvidi warriors had pillas sticking out of their shields, they threw them aside to fight unencumbered. But this made them more vulnerable to attacks. As a result, the legions were able to drive the Helvidi back towards the hill where their baggage train was located. At this time, the Roman waxes were attacked by Helvetian allies. 15,000 Boi and Tulind warriors attacked the flank of the Roman army. Caesar ordered a third line of infantry to be deployed against Boi and Tulingi, while the first two lines met a new Helvetian attack. Seeing this, the retreating Helvetic army perked up and attacked again. It was a critical moment in the battle for Caesar's army. The battle between the Roman legions and the Helvetii continued for many hours into the night. Finally, the Romans captured the Helvetic baggage train. Caesar reported that 130,000 Helvetii escaped, but only 110,000 of them survived the retreat. Caesar was unable to pursue them due to his battle wounds as well as the time needed to bury the dead, so he rested for three days before pursuing the fleeing Helvetii. Within four days of the battle, the Helvetii had reached the territory of the Longones. Caesar warned the Lingones not to assist them, which prompted the Helvetii and their allies to surrender. Eventually, the Helvetians had to return to their lands. In conclusion, the Helvetii campaign was a significant military campaign in Julius Caesar's career and in the history of the Roman Republic. It marked a pivotal moment in the expansion of Roman power in Gaul and demonstrated Caesar's military prowess as a strategist and tactician through his swift and decisive action. Caesar was able to prevent the Helvetii migration and protect Rome's borders from potential harm. The campaign also highlighted the Roman legion's superior military might and their ability to adopt different battle formations to counter the enemy's tactics.
The Helvetii campaign set the stage for Caesar's later conquests of Gaul and ultimately contributed to the downfall of the Roman Republic. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like it and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss new videos. See you soon.